and welcome to this talk. By the way, who do you think is interested in your work? Do you think it's your life partner or maybe your boss? Maybe you should think again, because most probably the hackers are very interested in your work. They are interested in finding vulnerabilities that they can exploit in order to get some benefits out of your business. That is why today I will speak about how we can simplify security by using automation and gamification. I am Monica Jovan and I am Head of Security Development in Visma. I fall in love with IT when I saw the first computer in my life. From then I knew that I would work in this domain. And in 2019, I decided that I should combine my two passions, research and security, and to see how this path goes. So that's why I started to find ways and to implement them that will simplify security, to make sure that the people that need to use them, that need to use different security activities, don't find them overwhelming. So for this, I'm using different research methodologies and I'm combining all of this with design thinking. So let's go on and see. But before that, I should tell you that Visma has over 300 companies and they buy approximately 40 new companies per year. And all these companies have uh, products and they have development teams that are self-managed. So you can imagine that this brings a lot of new technologies and we have a lot and a very diverse technologies like in Visma. So this might bring a lot of challenges to security, but we will find ways to overcome them. So now let's uh, think a little bit. Think about how all these companies started. It all started with an idea, isn't it? Somebody had a great idea and the idea grow in their mind and they started to invest money and time and probably they hire some developers and some testers and other roles in the development team and they build up a product that in the end was a very good idea and become a very profitable business. But wouldn't it be a shame that when you try to open that beautiful product Instead of seeing what was supposed to see, you'll see some videos with funny cats because maybe a hacker wanted to make some fun of you. So probably your reputation will go down and you'll not be very happy. You were so hard for it and it deserved to be safe. So what can you do? Maybe you hire a security specialist. And maybe you ask that security specialist to write some policies. But let's face it, most of the policies are known only by the ones that write them and not by the ones that implement them. Because the ones that implement them don't have the time and don't necessarily know where to look for them or what they need to implement because they don't know too much about security. But Let's think, who should implement them? In case of a product, probably it's developers. So do you think that developers have time to read books like these ones, for example? Do you think they have time to learn about security, to become specialists in security, so they know how they can implement this in their products? Probably not, because the main goal is to deliver software as fast as possible they need to deliver features as fast as possible. Otherwise, the business will not exist because other businesses will come faster than yours. So how can we do to integrate security in our products? Well, in Visma, we created different programs for security based on which assets we need to protect. And for all these products, we created some services that needs to uh, be used in order to make sure that we reduce the security risk. As you can see in this picture, a lot of acronyms are there. And we did a research and we asked developers how they feel about this onboarding to this all, all these services. And they mentioned that they feel overwhelmed, not only because there are many services, but also because 
they don't know what these acronyms means or maybe they don't know what each of these services is used for or maybe they don't know what to expect so all this unknown brings a lot a lot of fear in them so what we did we started to create some descriptions for all these services and we based uh, this description on diffusion of innovation theory and as you can see in the picture a lot of questions need to be answered so that the developers will know how they can use these services for what they can use these services what are the differences between them what's expected from them how much time do they need to onboard how much time do they need to allocate after onboarding to use this service and who to contact in case of problems so all this information needs to be available to them and once they decide which services to use the best way that we consider was to create an application where they can choose these onboardings so we created an application as you can see below that uh, allows them to have easy onboarding and what they need to do is just select the services they they want to onboard and they click begin onboarding and after they provide all the details that are needed for that specific service they can start using the service but of course not everything is so easy so we have different services and different services require different things so for example i will show you the two extreme cases one of the faster service is for example software composition analysis and in software composition analysis the only information that we require from the teams is to tell us the contact person in the team this contact person will receive administrative permission for his or her organization and from there they will be able to add to their build pipeline the scanning for different third-party vulnerabilities all this can be done in less than 15 minutes so this can be seen as one of the fastest security services that we have of course to fix all the vulnerabilities takes another time but this will be repeated over and over again for each build that they are doing but on the other side we have services that are very complex like for example in our case is security self-assessment which for you to imagine, it's like a threat modeling that is guided by having different questions they need to answer. So what they need to do is they need to uh, draw the diagram of their system. And after that, they need to answer different questions based on this diagram. Whenever they find that the security is not good, they need to create some improvement issues in their tracking system. And of course, to help them even more, this assessment is reviewed after that by a security specialist. We can guide them in how to create a better design for their application, of course, from security point of view. And they will need to do this every year because we know code change very fast and we need to update this uh, information all the time. So. Once they are um, onboarded to different security services, we are going to the second step on collecting data. And we are collecting data about their onboardings and about their vulnerabilities that were discovered by these security services in our application that we call Security Index. In Security Index, we list all the products that we have in our company or all applications, how you want to name them and you can uh, go a little bit deeper and you will see how that application is looking from security point of view so in fact it's like having a security score uh, once they drill in uh, and select one of the application they can see more details like for example if they are onboarded to some of the services or not and if they have vulnerabilities they they didn't fix for example or for example some scanning they forgot to update because we require them to scan their code very often i think if it's possible for every commit they are doing 
but in extreme cases when we have monoliths for example and the code base is very large then probably they can scan their code every 14 days or every 30 days but if they are doing less than that of course they will be visible in this system but now let's see about gamification and when we are talking about gamification everything starts with uh, the director of the company selecting the risk appetite and how we translate this is that we have four security tiers they need to choose from it's uh, for example platinum where you have the lowest security risk because you onboard to all the security services that are available and on the other extreme is for example the bronze tier where for example you have a very high risk appetite and in that case you can use only some of the security features that we offer but of course the security risk will be higher because you don't use all the available features that are possible for your system and after that, after they choose the tier they want to, to be on, so that's their target. Then we calculate from previous step different points. So for example, whenever a product is not onboarded, or for example, they are not fixing their security vulnerabilities in the time that is needed, or for example, they do not scan their code as often as we require, then they receive penalty points. And these penalty points accumulate. And for example, for platinum, we allow maximum 300 points. So if you go above these 300 points, then of course you will lose your platinum tier and you will go for gold or silver or bronze, depending how many po points you collect. So the goal is very simple to have as the least number of points possible. And this is very easy for the developers because in this way they can see what they need to prioritize and they see where they need to improve. So it's very easy to use system. And of course, for a security perspective, it's also a very good system because depending on the threats that we see in the market, maybe we change how many points we give for a service depending on what exists. For example, in war period like we are now, maybe we want to increase CTI, like cyber threat intelligence points. And maybe in other situation, when we want to move security left, then we will increase the points for self-assessment because we want to work more on the design of the product. So depending on this, you can play with these points and uh, you can create your strategy using these kind of points. Because, of course, where you give more points, there is where the developers will focus more. But, of course, not everything is perfect. So you need to make sure that you let your teams know that whenever they choose, for example, a platinum and they reach platinum, it doesn't mean that their security is perfect and they are not hackable. It means that they have a lower security risk. But of course, security risk is still present because every time new services appear and every time new things need to be done. And this is what's very good with this system because, for example, now we are working on the research about infrastructure as code scanning. So once this scanning tool will be available for all the products, then we can introduce this service in our security index and then everybody will see also information about that so they will prioritize the onboarding on infrastructure scanning so it's a very nice system it's very customer and uh, it's very easy to use and it's easy to use from developers but also very easy to use for a director or for ceo because they can see how the security posture of each of their products are and of course they can see also how which products needs improvements because many times when we see for example that a product is not performing in the tier that it's required for them to perform then it's probably a person 
prioritization issue or maybe they need more budget to hire somebody or maybe the personnel lack training so they in this way we find what is the root cause and we help them uh, go over this so from this point of view it's a really really nice system but then let's go to the last part on how we continue um, improve the security and like i told you before we are doing research to find new services that the teams can use and in for example it's infrastructure of school scanning but uh, now i would like also to think about how we can improve the services that we already have because we collected a lot of data and we can use that data to make data-driven decisions so for example you collected all the vulnerabilities that were discovered by these tools so what you can do you can build your top 10 vulnerabilities list because it's very probable that your top 10 is very different from the global top 10 vulnerability that you can find on the internet so uh, what we did we created another tool that takes all this information and creates for example statistics like top 10 vulnerability and the teams can for example decide to see the top 10 based on technology or the top 10 based on visma on the top 10 based on their product and in this way they can change what they are doing or they can learn about vulnerabilities that are trending up so they can see for example that now this vulnerability is more and more visible and they can take some actions from there and of course the security team can do the same so when once we see that a lot of vulnerabilities appear in one direction we can try to create some campaigns awareness campaign about that or we can try to offer some uh, security trainings regarding that kind of vulnerability but another aspect is also that we can see how much money it's costing us to offer a service and how many vulnerabilities the system discovers but most important is if the developers have trust in this systems or not because if they do not trust the system they will not fix the issues discovered by the systems and then it doesn't work paying the service so in this way you can also prioritize the budget that you have in order to offer the most important services to your developers um, and also another thing that you can do with this is that you can create a lot of uh, new security features by looking on what's not discovered for example you see uh, in the market that there are a lot of new vulnerabilities appearing all the time but your system doesn't discover them so you are looking for the false negatives in this case what you can do is to validate if it's a false negative so you are looking to see if the system really didn't discover them maybe because they don't exist or because the systems are not designed for that and in case they, they are not designed for that then you discover something that you should offer later on so in this way you can always improve your security program and you always can change what you are offering to make sure that you are offering the best solution for the developers and before we end i would like to tell you that what I discussed today was a lot about security in applications. But as you saw, we have different programs from different assets. And this can be applied exactly the same for the other programs. So it doesn't matter what kind of asset you try to protect, you can apply the same things. And in the end, if you will have to remember only three things from this talk, it's Always try to automate everything that is possible. Always try to gamify things to make them more fun and easy for the developers to use. And don't forget to empower them. Don't forget to tell them that the decision, the security decisions are done by them and not by the security team. They are the ones that need to be empowered in security. They are the ones that have the power to change the security posture of your company. So thank you very much. 
and see you next time. Bye.